So before you get into the pails and rails drills, I figure it would be good to explain what pails and rails actually is. Pails is progressive angle isometric loading and regressive angle isometric loading, which essentially means you take a joint to the very end of its range of motion, you hold a stretch there, and then you find isometric contractions of the progressive and the regressive tissue. I will show you what that means. So for my wrist, for example, if I come to my end range of motion for wrist extension, this is it, heel of my hand is still on the ground. For all pails and rounds, you're going to come into the stretch, find your end range of motion, and then stay there for at least two minutes. Two minutes is what the research shows um, is the amount of time you need at least for your cells to start communicating and changing. A 30 second stretch isn't going to cut it. So once you've found the stretch for two minutes, you're then going to squeeze everything on the progressive angle, which for this is everything on the stretch. So this side of the progressive angle is what you would push to come out of the stretch. So when you're here, you're going to push down through the fingers, through the hand to try and come out of the stretch. Obviously, the floor is here blocking you and it becomes an isometric contraction. And then the reverse of that is the rails. So it's everything that would return you to the stretch. It's all the stuff on the other side of the joint. And here, it's like I'm trying to lift my fingers up, but again, the floor is blocking me, so I can't do it. And all I do is contract all the stuff to try and lift my fingers. Quite often, it will feel a bit crampy. That is totally normal. I know it's not pleasant, but it's not dangerous either. See if you can breathe through it. In fact, if you feel a crap coming on, see if you can even squeeze a little harder. Which brings me to ramping the contractions. So once you've done your two minute stretch, you're going to start ramping with about 20% of the maximum possible effort you can put in. It's known as your MVC, your maximum voluntary contraction. And you're gonna start slow, about 20% effort, and then ramp up to 40, 60, 80, and I want you to imagine you could hit almost every number on the way up. You're not just going 20, 40, 60, 80, or 2 out of 10, 4 out of 10. You know, like slowly try to get there. Once you get to what is your maximum safest effort, you're going to hold that for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then you're going to reverse it, go into the rails contraction. The rails can be max effort straight away. You're going to hold that for five to 10 seconds. Then you're going to release the contractions, but stay in the stretch. Don't come out of it. Take a few rounds of breath and let everything settle. And then repeat it, 20%, looking into the pails, 40, 60, 80, then your maximum safest effort, hold that, and then reverse from the rails contraction. Again, once you finish the rails, stay in position. Don't come out of it. Find two or three slow, steady breaths, and then you can gently start to come out of it. In all the videos, I will give you a maximum. So for some things like shoulder internal rotation, we don't go for max effort, especially the first few times you do it. You'll stay at about 50 or 60%. One other thing I want you to note is that on a day where, say, you're doing the drills, doing your homework, and you just feel a bit beat up and you don't have a maximum contraction in you, that is fine. You're still going to be able to put in work and make a difference to your tissues. What I want you to do instead is ramp to wherever feels okay for you. So that might be 50 or 60% instead of a maximum. And then just hold it for longer. So hold it for 20 seconds, 25, 45 if you can stand it. And then reverse into the rails. And then continue. And even the rails don't have to be maximum. You can make that about 50 or 60%. And then just make it a longer contraction. And if you're doing all this stuff several times a week, you might notice that some days, say two or three days a week, 
You can do a maximum in the other days you want to do about a 50% level. So just see how you go and know that you can still do the exercises even if you're not feeling up to a full maximum contraction.